How dare you call India Hindu country you fascist? screamed a woman with a red bindi at the top of her voice, who a minute ago had referred to a Muslim majority neighborhood as Muslim area and criticized the Hindu religious procession for failing to uphold proper decorum while traversing through a Muslim area. Her bindi appeared more red than the history of communism and was way bigger than the ordinary bindis, though not bigger than her hypocrisy. Islamists and leftists are quick to label individuals as fascist, xenophobic, Hindu nationalists and so forth the moment someone aligns India with its ancient Hindu culture. For them, India's status as a Hindu majority nation does not equate to it being a Hindu country. However, they find no issue in designating Muslim majority regions in India as Muslim areas. This stark contradiction serves as a glaring testament to their hypocrisy. The term Muslim area not only highlights the glaring hypocrisy of Islamo-leftist factions, but also raises significant concerns about its broader implications. In recent years, the use of this phrase has surged, reflecting an alarming trend. For many years now, Hindu festivals have rarely been free from Islamist aggression. Whether it's Ram Navmi, Hanuman Jayanti, Durga Puja or Shobha Yatras, incidents of mass stone pelting on these processions have become an annual recurrence. This has evolved into a well-established pattern within the Islamo-leftist ecosystem, one that is consistently replicated every time. The reoccurring pattern that has emerged involves two distinct but interlinked groups within the Islamo-leftist ecosystem, each playing a calculated role. The first faction is responsible for orchestrating the on-ground disruptions while the other group excels at reframing the narrative, manipulating public opinion to sanitize these incidents. Festivals such as Ram Navmi, Hanuman Jayanti, Durga Puja and Saraswati Puja, occasions known to feature traditional Hindu processions, are well marked on the Islamo-leftist calendar, preparing them for confrontations well in advance. Islamists have frequently been found armed with stones, patrol bombs and even firearms lying in wait for the processions to enter Muslim majority areas. As soon as these processions cross the invisible threshold of these so-called Muslim areas, an ambush ensues with stones being hurled upon the processions, sparking violent confrontations. Yet, the action on the ground are only half of this sinister equation. Once these attacks are carried out, the secondary faction, dedicated to whitewashing the incidents, swings into action, rapidly disseminating a doctored narrative through social media, opinion pieces and various digital media platforms. In their attempt to distort public perception, the Islamo-leftist network leans heavily on terms like provocation and Muslim area positioning these justifications for the attacks. The Hindu processions are accused of provoking the mob through loud music or for not upholding proper decorum while traversing through what is conveniently designated a Muslim area. Through these orchestrated efforts, they have subtly managed to establish numerous no-go zones across the country, areas where Hindu traditions and processions are neither welcomed nor tolerated. These efforts marginalize Hindus from exercising their cultural and religious rights in these areas under the pretext of respecting for the sensitivities of the Muslim areas. Let us look at two cases of violence in order to understand how this ecosystem reacts. New violence. The same reoccurring pattern unfolded during the new violence on July 31st last year. Tensions erupted across several regions of Haryana as stone pelting marred the Vishwa Hindu Parishad's Bridge Mandal Jal Abhishek procession in Mewat, a predominantly Muslim area. 
Amid the chaos, two home guards and a Hindu devotee was fatally shot while around a dozen police officers sustained injuries from the violent mob in Haryana's Nuh district. In response, the Haryana police invoked the Unlawful Activities Act in four separate cases tied to the July 2023 new rights, targeting 63 individuals including Congress leader and MLA Mamman Khan. As expected, however, the Islamo-leftist network resorted to its well-worn playbook. Instead of holding Mamman Khan and Islamist factions accountable for what appeared to be a premeditated assault, they turned their criticism towards the Hindu community questioning why the procession was organized in a so-called Muslim area. Behrej Violence On the 13th of October at Rehua Mansur village in the Hardi police station area of Behrej in Uttar Pradesh, violence between two communities broke out during the Maa Durga immersion procession. As the Maa Durga immersion procession made its way towards Gorya Ghat, Islamist mob near a mosque asked them to stop the DJ music accompanying the procession. This request incited a heated altercation between the two factions. In the ensuing turmoil, Islamist miscreant started hurling stones at the procession and the Ma Turga idol. Amid the clash, rogue elements from the Muslim side launched bullets upon the procession. Ram Gopal Mishra, a 22-year-old boy, the son of Kailash Nath from Rehua Mansur village, who was one of the members of the procession, got struck by gunfire at close range. He was subsequently transported to a medical college in Behrej, where he ultimately succumbed to his injuries during medical treatment. Following the incident, the Islamist leftist, as expected, have quickly resorted to usual to either justify or downplay the cold-blooded murder of Gopal Mishra by the Islamist mob. The perpetrators of this discourse have resorted to their customary victim-shaming tactics employing insidious strategies that serve to deflect accountability from the aggressors while casting aspersions on the character of the victim. The stark hypocrisy. On one side we see the whitewashing of gruesome murders, stone pelting upon Hindu religious processions by Islamo leftists, while on the other hand, we see the same ecosystem trying to peddle a communal angle and play the victim card of religion and intolerance in which a Muslim individual is confronted or punished by locals, re, often as a consequence of their own criminal actions such as theft or assault. The sheer hypocrisy embedded in this approach is stark. Those who rally to justify targeted violence against Hindus as mere reactions to provocations are the same voices who cry foul, bandishing labels of intolerance and bigotry the moment tables are turned.